Okay, President Herzog, thank you so much for taking the time. Pleasure. Um, it's now almost exactly two months since the October the 7th atrocities. Um, how do you think the world is responding to it, and how is Israel responding? It's a test to the world. It's a, it's a test to uh, all human beings who have to decide between evil and good. And I know it's complicated because uh, during your ongoing day's work or your challenges or your political challenges, you have many considerations. But at the end, the picture is very clear. This was a heinous atrocity, which the world hasn't seen for a long, long time. It was aimed at human beings, no matter what their religion or background is. It violated all rules of humanity. We're talking about chopping and burning and kidnapping. We're talking about all ages. We're talking about nationalities, dozens of different nationalities. We're talking about uh, different religions. Mm -hmm. We're talking uh, about, I would say, uh, unfortunately, a, 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 a test in, in like uh, t taking thousands of people and giving them hell and showing the world what hell could be. And therefore, the test to, uh, that each person has to look in the mirror and say, am I in any way saying that this is justified? And those who say are justified will be judged by history as people who are accomplices in, 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 in thought mm -hmm. to the one, one of the worst crimes in humanity. That is why I am so angry at times to hear world leaders. You can argue with Israel on anything you want, but this is way beyond it. It's a different sphere, different platform, and that's why humanity and morality must be here together. Um, do you think Israel is, achieve, is achieving its war aims at the moment? Yes, absolutely. It is uh, uprooting, eradicating, and uh, breaking apart a huge infrastructure of terror, but huge, huge in, in, in huge quantities. The world has to understand this is the biggest city of terror that has been unraveled in history. When you look at it, I mean, does anybody know of tunnels that you have under in, in such lengths going from all sorts of corners where you have full trucks and cars driving it as if it's a super highway? And this, is, uh, this infrastructure was built with smuggling of funds from Tehran, um, money laundered and by all sorts of resources that Hamas has taken that were given by the international community to help the people of Gaza. But it's, since money is fungible, you have billions of dollars going into the ground and building a city of terror. Now think about it, and I say to all decent human beings, had this money gone for the improvement of the life of the citizens of Gaza, we would be in a different place. And I will end my answer by telling you that in 2005, Israel pulled out of Gaza to the last iota. We were challenged by this decision. I was a member of the coalition then. And I and, I and my friends, we said, it will, we pull out, there will be Hong Kong of the Middle East. We will make Gaza the Hong Kong of the Middle East. Rather than making it Hong Kong of the Middle East, they took everybody's money. They placed an, a, 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 an evil regime on top of it and turned it into a war base, and that is why we have to eradicate it. What's uh, surprised you most about the international response since the 7th of October? A couple of things. First of all, there's a lot of response that is supportive of Israel and understands us and gives us full support to the, and the right, for the right to defend ourselves. But I've seen two phenomena which disturb me. Number one is hypocrisy. Many nations who quietly whisper in our ears, do the job, complete the job, get it over with, we are with you, but outside say terrible things against us. And secondly, uh, politicians and, mem and, and, and leaders, especially I must say European leaders, that surprise me dramatically as if they're kind of indifferent to the whole mm -hmm. and as everything is justified in order to repeat the same old slogans. But it's not... But the world has changed. Simply the world has changed. You can say a million times what you think will be the end solution to the conflict, but without making clear that you find the right formula, that Israelis feel safe, you will never have any solutions. Um, you, of course, came up through the left-wing part of this country. You were former leader of the Labour Party. Um, what do you think about 
the left-wing response of left-wing parties, allies of the Labour Party of this country. Right. So, you know, I grew up in Labour. Labour was a ca classic centrist party. Mm. Labour was the founding party of Israel and had and held both a sword and a uh, on olive uh, mm. uh, tree in, in our hands. Well, that's what we believed in. Um, however, it's true that uh, in recent uh, decades, uh, it was Labour who pursued uh, and stretched out its arm to go to peace with the Palestinians. And this has led to a major sea change in the region as well, and the inclusion of Israel in the region. That is why it's Haq Rabin went to the agreement in Oslo with the Palestinians together with Shimon Peres, and we all grew up following that, those footsteps. But we always fought terror and understood that there's no mercy to terror. What, ha what happened, what transpired to us, didn't surprise me. We saw sister parties of the labor movement in Israel, or I would say the left-wing parties in the world, uh, turn their back to Israel and uh, immediately um, showed double standards. There were a few parties and progressive uh, left uh, movements who, who did uh, make clear moral clarity remarks. But I met this week with a group of leaders from Europe and I said to them, they were Euro Euro European socialists, and I said to them, guys, you guys, all of, all of the uh, left progressive parties in the world need, need to look in the mirror and, and understand mm -hmm. something uh, that they missed in reality. Mm -hmm. There is a jihadist fundamentalist element which wants to wipe all of us off the map of the earth. This jihadist element emanates from an empire of evil in Tehran with a clear strategy. One has to read their writings and beliefs uh, for, uh, centuries old. That's what they believe in and therefore they have, they have a fork, idea of a fork from the north from Hezbollah and Syria, from the south in Gaza, from Yemen in the tip of but, the south from Iraq. But where has it, and if Israel wasn't there, Europe is next. It's obvious. But where, where has this message been lost? We're going, you saw this week uh, the heads of three of the most prominent universities in America uh, absolutely unable to just condemn calls for genocide against the and Jewish And it's surprising people. because it's decades of brainwashing. And you say, wasn't 9-11 supposed to be a wake-up call? How come progressive left in America is so indifferent and doesn't understand that after 9-11, this is the threat. Mm. It has nothing to do, believe me, with settlements, with borders, mm -hmm. or questions like that of a two-state solution in a teeny weeny corner of the earth. It has to do with a big ideology, like ancient old, old ideologies that want to swarm in and get everybody off the face of the earth. Christians definitely included. Mm. And all Democrats and peace lovers and Muslims who are peace lovers and Muslim nations who are making peace, are all included. I'll give you a little secret. So when I was candidate for prime minister, I met with some leaders of the Arab community in Israel, a very distinguished community, by the way, which also in this war has shown immense resilience. And I'm very proud of this relationship. But one of the leaders, I said to them, would you ever consider joining an Israeli government? Suppose I'm prime minister. And uh, they all had excuses about, let's do a peace process first. But one of them said, you don't get it. Our vision is from the, it was from the Muslim movement. Our vision is, in 50 years' time, you no boundaries in this place. These boundaries are all colonialistic um, markings on the map. You guys are all going to live in a, I mean, there will be a sea of Muslims, fundamentalist Muslims who will run this region, and you guys will be out. He said the truth, that's their vision. And I understand that, and I say to everybody, this is the battleground. We mm -hmm. are fighting for in, in a, right at the border of a clash of civilizational values. Let me put three uh, quick points to you uh, that come up in the international arena in particular. First, ceasefire. Everybody internationally seems to continuously be calling for a ceasefire. What's your attitude towards it? And this? then what happens? Suppose we go to a ceasefire and we don't shy away from possible humanitarian pauses because we, uh, you know, we want to pursue the return of our hostages. And remember, we have 150 hostages still there, old people, young women, all mm -hmm. under huge torture and suffering. Mm -hmm. 
But uh, I would say that the, if we don't finish the, the, the Hamas's military capabilities, we will simply go back to the same old stuff, rather than changing the course of history, mm -hmm. which means the direction of the region. Why can't we offer the Gazan people some better hope? Why can't we offer Israelis better hope? Why can't they dwell in peace together like they used to in the past? And the reason is it's only because of Hamas, and we have to do whatever we can to, un un to uproot this evil empire in order to enable other human, moderate, peace-loving forces to emerge. Okay, second, uh, genocide. Internationally, people calling, claiming that what uh, this country is doing in Gaza is genocide. What do you say it's to that? It's a terrible remark. The genocide was applied on us. On the, it was a clear genocidal attack of thousands and thousands of people on thousands and thousands of, of innocent civilians. Israel is taking all necessary steps by international humanitarian law to, uh, imp, to uh, apply its right of self-defense in the proper manner. Meaning, if you attack me from your home right nearby with missiles, with grenades, with guns, with whatever, I have the full right to go and catch you and kill you. Now, if you are in civilian premises, that's what Hamas is doing. I have the full right to go into these premises and get them out. However, there are civilians there. Then what do we do? We call these civilians by millions of phone calls. We send them leaflets by millions. We text them by millions and we direct them, go out of the house. Let me catch the thugs and the villains and the, and the bad guys. And then you'll be able to go back and rebuild. That's what we're doing according to international humanitarian law. And so we have, and I must add, we're very, we, we don't, not only do we, we don't want to hurt uh, any Palestinian who's innocent, we are taking necessary precautions, but also it is painful. We care, I care a lot for the plight of the Palestinians under such circumstances. Um, there is a tendency in America in particular uh, to say we have great sympathy with Israel um, that we s sympathize with what Israel has suffered in recent months. But this is another reason to double down on the two-state solution. So the issue is that it's, this is all premature. Okay, you can have a vision of how we live in peace. It makes sense to have the two nations dwell in peace in some sort of a, a peace agreement. But right now, it's totally detached from the reality because the reality requires us to deal with the pain with the fear, with the trauma. Our nation has gone through huge trauma. Why would any Israeli accept under such circumstances the notion that five, ten minutes from here there could be a, a, a hostile army all of a sudden doing the same? And therefore, in order to move to peace, one has to deal with the root feelings of the nations and, fa and satisfy us and also the Palestinians in the way how does one secure their safety, especially ours. We've gone such, through such terrible traumas. We tried every possible avenue for peace. We pulled out unilaterally. We From signed, Gaza. Yeah, we, we signed the bilateral agreements. We tried to uh, take all sorts of other steps on the ground to move towards a new reality. Every time we tried it, we got more terror. That's, uh, that's, that's it. We got more wars and more terror. In, in the last two years, Israel has opened up its borders to Gaza, enabling tens of thousands of Gazans to work in Israel. However, what they did is, they flared up a lot of terror here in the West Bank and Jerusalem. Terrible, terrible stories, terrible atrocities, terrible pain, which I've, uh, I've seen myself as president. The world didn't, didn't give a damn, and they meanwhile prepared this atrocity of the 7th of October, some of these workers were like spying for them too. Yeah. And all of a sudden they swarm in like the Huns of old day, days and raping and burning and chopping and we're seeing things that nobody has seen. We're seeing families together bonded in one wire and burnt. Mm. Unbelievable. It seems to me in this situation that Israel couldn't be further away from agreeing a two-state solution with the Palestinians. So why is, why is this such an easy fix of American statesmen and others whenever they come here? First of all, uh, 
there are key questions which are always looming above. Uh, what do you do with the demography of things? How do, how do you preserve the identity of a Jewish state? Uh, making clear that you have an unequivocal Jewish majority in a democracy like ours, and how do we separate from the Palestinian people? These are all serious questions and legitimate ones. We should make sure that we have a, a kind of a northern pole that we can look at, which offers us a model of peace. What happened in recent years was that because of the Abraham Accords, and the inclusion of Israel in the region, there was a trajectory of moving to peace. Mm. The trajectory was pretty amazing because it is the right historical movement. Since the agreement, first agreement with an Arab state, which was Egypt, then Jordan, then, of course, moving to the Abraham Accords and hopefully Saudi Arabia, that is the trajectory. And this is, offers a grand, huge vision for the world as well. So I'm, I believe this trajectory cannot be derailed, and in it, we have to find ways and means to accompany, uh, find the ways and means to kind of accommodate a solution between us and the Palestinians. Um, final question. Um, if, if Israel does achieve the, the objective of destroying Hamas, what confidence do you have that there isn't Hamas 2.0 the next day? We always, we cannot guarantee that. And uh, you could say it about every evil possible. But there's no other choice. There's no other choice. The citizens on the border in Gaza, with Gaza, which were, which were citizens, innocent people, doing the, the, I mean, they were the biggest peace lovers in Israel, mm. the biggest supporters of the peace movement. Working with Palestinians. Oh, and then donating to them and aiding them and helping them. I mean, they lost so many of their members and friends. They will not go back to the border without full safety. And so many Israelis have lost their sense of confidence and they want to make sure that now we have full confidence. That will require a new regime in Gaza. We will have to work on it. The world has to take a deep breath and work with us on this. You have international partners for that? I'm sure we do. I'm sure. I'm, convi I'm convinced. They are all, all, all decent leaders who know that we are fighting evil, including the British government, for example, they all know that there will have to be a new regime that will direct Gaza. I'm not saying if it will, how, what will be its linkage to the Palestinian Authority or other international uh, agencies or models. These were, it happened in history. But we can direct the region towards peace. And we can find new solutions. We have to be innovative and open-minded and open-hearted. And it will happen in your lifetime? Uh, you have to believe, you know, we must dream. My dad wrote in his uh, book, in his memoirs, we must dream, and I believe in it. We must dream and work towards it. And actually you had examples in history that following terrible, terrible atrocities and wars, people find a way to build a better future. President Herzog, thank, thank you. Thank you very much, Douglas, thank you.